Hi everyone, we're going to learn how to handle exceptions with File I.O., which stands for File Input and Output. So when dealing with files, Java forces you to provide exception handling. The I.O. exception class, which stands for Input Output Exception, is a built-in checked exception class. Also a finally block, which follows all catch blocks in a try catch block, will always execute whether or not an exception was thrown. And this is typically used to clean up code such as closing a file or closing a connection to a database and so on. All right, so in this class demo, let's create a file. So, we'll, and to do that, I'm going to use the print writer class, print writer pw for print writer equals new print writer. Let's call this my file dot text. Okay, import print writer, and notice that it's asking me to add throws declaration or surround with try catch. Let's try the surround with try catch instead. There we go and it automatically adds the try catch block for you. And then to do is the auto generated catch block comment. You can delete that and it gives you a e dot print stack trace which is not what we want. So we want to do something else instead. So what this is going to do is try to create a file called myfile.txt and if there's any kind of issues creating it such as you know like not having write permissions or so on it's going to throw a file not found exception and if it does open it let's actually write to the file pw.printline hello world all right so on the catch block let's try to handle that by saying system dot out dot printline E dot get message. Let's see what message the, the exception object gives us by default. And then let's add a finally block. Finally. And the finally block is where you typically close files or any kind of connection that's open. PW dot close. And we get an error because PW is, is declared inside this try block, so it's outside of the scope of the try catch finally. So I'm going to declare it above the try right here. That broadens the scope so we can actually close it and I need to initialize it first. Just initialize it to null. Alright, let's see what happens. Let's see if it actually writes the file. So I ran the program. Let me refresh my Java project by right clicking and clicking refresh. There's my file.txt and there's hello world. Alright, it didn't have any problems. Let's try to do the same thing and open the file and then try to read it. So we have this text file, myfile.txt, that has hello world in there. Let's try to read it. To do that, we need to create a file object, myfile.txt. Then we create a scanner object, we'll call it fs for file scanner. Equals new scanner. We'll pass that file object to it, F, import file, import scanner, and it's going to ask to add a strong with try catch. Let's just do that. So there is where we access the scanner. Let's get rid of this stuff in the catch block and let's just print out e.get message. Let's see what the default message is here if this throws an exception. All right, and then in the finally, we can close the scanner, fs.close, which doesn't have access to it, so let's declare it above the try. Scanner, fs. And then delete scanner right there. All right, all right, no errors. Let's run the program. And if it does open it, actually, I forgot to do something. Let's do a system.out. Print line fs dot next line. So it should just print out the first line in there. There it is. Hello world. All right. So now this is how to use try catch finally when reading a file. But let's actually try to make it throw an exception this time. So let's try to open a file that doesn't exist. Let's call this my file two, which doesn't exist. I don't have a file called my file two. Let's run the program, and it looks like the program crashed. Oops, but it actually didn't. This is the result of the e.get message. 
Actually, you know what? It did crash. I have a null pointer exception because I'm trying to close something that's null and it never got set. So I could just check before I close it. If fs not equal to null, then close it. That should get rid of that error at least. Now when I run the program, the e.get message just says that the system cannot find a specified file. And that's what the default message field is set to for the file not found object e. And you could have also just typed your own message in there saying file does not exist. It would have just done that instead. So that's how we deal with exception handling when reading or writing files. And also if you are reading or writing to a file inside of a method, you shouldn't have the try catch blocks inside the method. You should just say that the method throws either a file not found exception or IO exception and let the person that's calling the method handle it with the try catch block.